On October 26, 2024, Spanish police descended upon a luxury villa in the coastal city of Malaga. The operation was meticulously planned, involving months of surveillance and intelligence gathering. The villa, a symbol of opulence and excess, stood in stark contrast to the grim reality of the crimes committed by its occupants. They were there to apprehend two fugitives wanted for crimes that had shaken Ecuador to its core. The operation was swift and decisive, with heavily armed officers breaching the villa's defenses and securing the perimeter. The fugitives, caught off guard, had little time to react. William Alcivar and Alex Alcivar, brothers and alleged leaders of the notorious Tiguerones drug trafficking organization, were taken into custody. The Alcivar brothers had built an empire on the backs of countless victims, their reach extending far beyond Ecuador's borders. Their arrest was not just a local victory, but a significant blow to international drug trafficking networks. The arrests marked a major victory in the fight against transnational organized crime, but more importantly, they sent shockwaves through the corridors of power in Quito. The Tigarones had long been a thorn in the side of law enforcement, their operations shrouded in secrecy and protected by layers of corruption. The Alciver brothers had long been considered untouchable. Their influence permeated every level of society, from the streets to the highest echelons of government. They lived a life of luxury, their wealth flaunted in the face of a struggling populace. Their wealth and influence had corrupted officials and instilled fear in entire communities. The Tigarones operated with impunity, their power unchecked by a system that had failed to hold them accountable. The fear they instilled was palpable, a constant reminder of the consequences of crossing them. Their capture, orchestrated through close cooperation between Spanish and Ecuadorian authorities, signaled a potential turning point in Ecuador's struggle against the encroaching power of the narco-state. The operation was a testament to the power of international collaboration, a unified front against a common enemy. The news of the arrests spread like wildfire through Ecuador. Social media platforms buzzed with the latest updates, the story shared and reshared by a populace hungry for justice. The headlines dominated the news cycle, a beacon of hope in a landscape often dominated by despair. For many, it was a sign that justice could prevail, even for those at the very top of the criminal underworld. The arrests were a symbol of resilience, a reminder that no one was beyond the reach of the law. The public's reaction was overwhelmingly positive, a collective sigh of relief that echoed across the nation. For President Daniel Noboa, grappling with a crippling electricity crisis and a nation on edge, it presented a much-needed political lifeline. The successful operation provided a moment of respite, a chance to rally the nation around a common cause. It was an opportunity to restore faith in the government and its ability to protect its citizens. The arrests of the Alcivar brothers were more than just a law enforcement victory. They were a symbol of hope and resilience. They demonstrated that even in the face of overwhelming odds, justice could be served. The nation, united in its desire for a better future, stood together in the aftermath, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The impact of the arrest was felt far beyond Ecuador's borders. International news outlets picked up the story, highlighting the significance of the operation in the global fight against organized crime. The world watched as Ecuador took a stand, its actions resonating with countries facing similar battles. As Ecuador looked to the future, the arrests of the Alcivar brothers served as a reminder of what could be achieved through determination and cooperation. The road ahead was still fraught with challenges, but the nation had taken a crucial step forward. The fight against the narco state was far from over, but the people of Ecuador had shown that they were ready to reclaim their country, one victory at a time. The Alcivar brothers' notoriety stemmed not only from their alleged drug trafficking exploits, but also from their suspected involvement in a brazen attack that had shocked the nation. This attack was not just another crime, it was a statement, a bold declaration of defiance against the authorities. In March 2024, a group of armed men stormed a television station in Guayaquil, Ecuador's largest city. The station, known for its investigative journalism, had been a thorn in the side of many criminal organizations. They fired shots, spread terror, and left behind a chilling message. We are the Tigarones, and we do what we want. This message was not just graffiti. It was a manifesto, a declaration of their perceived invincibility. The attack on the television station was a calculated act of intimidation, a public display of the gang's power and reach.
The damage was extensive, but the psychological impact was even greater. It sent a clear message to the media, the government, and the people of Ecuador. No one was beyond their grasp. The media, already under threat, now faced an even more dangerous landscape. The audacity of the attack exposed the vulnerability of Ecuadorian society to the corrosive influence of organized crime. Citizens, who once felt safe, now looked over their shoulders, fearing the next attack. It also highlighted the limitations of the country's law enforcement and judicial institutions, seemingly powerless to confront the growing threat posed by groups like the Tigarones. The police, despite their best efforts, were often outgunned and outmaneuvered. Community leaders began to hold meetings discussing ways to protect their neighborhoods. The sense of unity was strong, but so was the fear. Internationally, the attack drew widespread condemnation. Experts on organized crime weighed in, discussing the implications for Ecuador and the region. The world watched as Ecuador grappled with this new reality. Ecuador, a country known for its rich culture and history, now faced a dark chapter. The peaceful streets and cultural landmarks stood in stark contrast to the violence that had erupted. In response, the government began to implement new security measures. Law enforcement agencies received additional training and resources, but the road ahead was uncertain. Despite the challenges, the resilience of the Ecuadorian people shone through. Communities began to rebuild, and a sense of hope slowly returned. The echoes of the brazen attack would linger, but so would the determination to overcome. The arrest of the Alcivar brothers in Spain, thousands of miles from their base of operations, underscored the increasingly transnational nature of organized crime. It also highlighted the importance of international cooperation in combating these sophisticated criminal networks. Spanish and Ecuadorian authorities worked hand in glove to track down the fugitives. Intelligence sharing, extradition treaties, and coordinated law enforcement operations were crucial in bringing the Alcivars to justice. This successful operation served as a powerful example of what can be achieved when countries work together to confront shared threats. It also sent a strong message to criminal organizations operating across borders. No safe havens exist for those who seek to profit from violence and lawlessness. Section 4. A Glimmer of Hope Amidst Darkness For President Noboa, the arrest came at a critical juncture. His administration was under intense scrutiny, and the nation was watching his every move. His administration was facing mounting pressure over its handling of a severe electricity crisis that had plunged parts of the country into darkness. The power outages were not just an inconvenience, they were a symbol of the government's inability to provide basic services. Families struggled to go about their daily lives, businesses suffered, and the overall morale of the nation was at an all-time low. Public anger was growing, and the political opposition sensed an opportunity to exploit the situation. Protests erupted in major cities, with citizens demanding immediate action and accountability. The opposition leaders were quick to capitalize on the discontent, organizing rallies and speaking to the media about the government's failures. The capture of the Alcivar brothers, long seen as symbols of impunity and lawlessness, provided a much-needed boost to Noboa's flagging political fortunes. These arrests were not just about taking down criminals, they were a statement. A statement that the government was still in control and capable of enforcing the law. The Alciver brothers had been a thorn in the side of law enforcement for years, and their capture was a significant victory. It allowed him to project an image of strength and decisiveness, demonstrating to a skeptical public that his government was capable of delivering on its promises to restore order and security. Noboa took to the airwaves, addressing the nation with a renewed sense of confidence. He visited troops, shook hands with supporters, and made it clear that his administration was committed to making Ecuador a safer place. The arrests, while a significant development, were just one battle in a much larger war. The fight against crime and corruption was far from over. Law enforcement agencies continued their efforts, conducting raids and investigations to dismantle criminal networks. The armed forces increased their presence in urban areas, aiming to deter any resurgence of criminal activity. The underlying conditions that had allowed groups like the Tigarones to flourish, poverty, inequality, corruption, remained largely unaddressed. These deep-rooted issues required long-term solutions and a commitment to social and economic reforms. The government needed to focus on improving living conditions, providing education and job opportunities, and tackling corruption at all levels. 
Only then could they hope to create a stable and prosperous future for all Ecuadorians. Section 5. The Tigarones, a legacy of violence. The Tigarones, whose name translates to Little Tigers, emerged from the slums of Guayaquil in the early 2000s. They started as a small-time street gang involved in petty crime, but quickly graduated to more lucrative activities such as drug trafficking, extortion, and kidnapping. Their rise to prominence coincided with the increasing flow of cocaine through Ecuador, strategically located between the world's largest cocaine producers, Colombia and Peru. The Tigarones, ruthless and entrepreneurial, seized the opportunity to become major players in the transnational drug trade. As their wealth and power grew, so too did their brutality. The Tigarones became known for their use of extreme violence to eliminate rivals, silence critics, and intimidate the population. Their reign of terror turned parts of Guayaquil into virtual war zones, leaving a trail of bloodshed and fear in their wake.